Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. We continue to preview the 2022 college football season. Our stop today is in Kansas City, and we get to visit with the head football coach for the Avila Eagles, Coach Mark Benavidez, in his fifth season with the program. Coach, a good year last year, another seven-win season. And I know that's become a, a, a bit of a habit now since you've been with Avila, winning at least seven games in a season, seven and three overall. And I have to mention this, too, three losses all of them coming against teams that claim to share of the KCAC championship. So in light of that, obviously, quality losses against ranked teams. I know a loss is a loss. You still want to go undefeated all the way through and make your way into claiming a part of that championship, if not outright itself. Take us a little bit through 2021, and, and what do you take away? Yeah, um, 2021 and you know the previous season, our team had to face a bunch of adversity. Um, you know, Going into it, we had high expectations. End up getting our first loss against um, against South Southwestern. I think that was week four, and uh, I actually ended up getting COVID, and so I was actually out myself for two games, including the Kansas Wesleyan game. Uh, hospitalized for a brief time frame. I'm 100 okay now, obviously. Good. Good. Um, but uh, you know, knowing what our coaching staff had to do without me, and actually another coach was out as well. Um, it made me extremely proud knowing those guys could step up and do whatever they had to do to make sure we were successful still. And then um, with that, a bunch of nagging injuries, you know, uh, the quarterback situation, inconsistency at certain spots. Um, it was it was definitely difficult. Um, but I think having spring ball this spring for the first time in a few years, our guys are, are definitely really focused right now and have that same mindset of, you know, what our team goals are and what, we're, what we've got to accomplish this upcoming season. Coach, I want to talk about some of the players that are returning, and you do have some quality players, some good talent returning. I know that you recruited well as as well, but uh, let's talk about Malik Nesbitt because it has to stop. Start, excuse me, it has to start right there. Opponents are having a hard time stopping him. I would imagine uh, another All American season for your running back, and also another. It's back to back thousand yard rushing seasons for him. So I think really your offense, uh, he's going to be someone who's going to carry another load for you this year. Absolutely. And it's not just the production everybody sees on the field or the stats. Um, the guy can do it all on the field. The guy's a great blocker, a great leader, a type of guy that regardless of how tired he might be, he can still push through it the, in the fourth quarter and be a dominant force for us. A guy that's in the weight room that, um, you know, can can help his teammates out or his younger teammates out in terms of showing them form or technique and talking about what they've got to do to uh, to be successful. And so hands down, I mean, like you said, it starts with that guy and um, knowing he's been um, here essentially since I've been a head coach. So all these seasons, um, it's it's definitely going to be a, hopefully a huge year for us together, making sure that we're being successful this this upcoming season. Coach, there were two quarterbacks that saw a lot of action for you last year, Kyle DeOrio and Peyton Burke. Of those two, DeOrio is coming back this year. Uh, does that clear things up for you a little bit, or is there going to be some more strong competition in the camp? How's it going to work? Yeah, it's going to be interesting. We actually had a lot of competition this spring. Um, so last year, we actually officially started five different guys. Now, not all five guys played a bunch, um, but started five different guys. And then last year, we had a, a senior uh uh, Sebastiano, Julius Sebastiano actually tore his knee, I believe week two. And so he's coming back. He was able to do a little bit this spring. Um, we've got some other guys, uh, Francisco Beltran, who was a, a redshirt freshman last year, showed a bunch of upside this spring, other freshmen that did a great job this spring. And we actually got a transfer, um, uh, quarterback that's competing as well. And so it's going to be a competition this fall, uh, meeting with those guys. Those guys understand it. I mean, we're not going to hand anything to anybody here. Those guys got to compete. And historically, since I've been a head coach, we've had multiple guys play every single season. Um, since I've been a coach in my 10 years, I've only had one season in which one quarterback has been the only guy to play. <laughs> and so, um, you know, whoever can go out there and, and, and get the job done, they're going to have the opportunity. And if these guys are working their butts off and multiple guys show that, you know, we can we can trust them on the field. We'll have different packages potentially for some different guys. We're speaking now with Coach Mark Benavidez from Avila here on Midwest Sports Net, previewing the college football season for 2022 on the summit. I'm Joey McWilliams. I want to say thanks to everyone as we have crossed the thousand subscriber mark and now we're pushing for 2000. So please like this video and please subscribe to the channel. We talk about small college sports and more through the Midwest and beyond. Coach, uh, 
number of good players coming back on the defensive side is uh, Jose Bautista. Uh, led the team in tackles last season, 67 tackles, six and a half tackles for loss. I had an interception, had a couple of fumble recoveries as well, but you got good play from your linebacker core. And uh, among those, and I know there, there are a number of them, you get Nick Furlow back as well this year. Yeah, absolutely. That's another room, um, you know, a lot of competition. And like you mentioned, Nick Furlow coming back, a guy that didn't get to play at all last year. Um, you know, he ended up tearing his knee in, in spring of 21 when we're playing those meaningful games in March and April. And, and um, so we're extremely excited to get him back. He's a guy that was able to do a little bit of stuff in spring ball and it's night and day difference with a guy like that on the field. And so um, seeing who we have, who we're able to bring back from a year ago, some other young players that got to, got to develop um, an older guy like Jalen Beckton, who plays more of a DN type spot, but also outside linebacker um, is extremely exciting right now. I mean, that, that is a very competitive room. And something in which just as coaches, our trust level in so many different positions has increased drastically from what we've been able to see this spring and just guys being able to be uh, be here and, and, and getting more reps, obviously, through last fall. Coach, one more player I do want to mention, too, an all-conference performer in Terrell Valentine coming back for you. Led the team in the secondary, three interceptions, five breakups as well. So we talk about some play maybe closer to the line. How about your secondary? Yeah, honestly, I would say our secondary is probably the most improved position um, I've seen on the team, at least as an offensive play caller during the spring, seeing those guys develop, um, you know, not to talk down on, but there's a lot of inconsistencies at times last fall. And just seeing a guy like Terrell, a guy like some of those other guys on the Arnold Field, JT, uh, Katron Jones, older guys, um, it's definitely a position that we think has drastically improved. We brought some other transfers in. Um, some guys that didn't play a ton last fall that have definitely developed. And so um, I think he could have a big year for us. And I think that whole group could have a huge season for us and help us win some more games. The KCAC, I think, gets better all the time. And and I know that you're right there in the thick of it and, and have been for a few years now. And it's it's a conference that I believe is, again, getting stronger. I think that was represented in the playoffs this past year. And, of course, I think they, I personally believe they didn't ask me Coach, they don't ask me these things, and I don't know right. why sometimes, but I think that the conference should have had three teams in, realistically, because of the, the play of those teams. But that having been said, that I know it's a, it's a tough conference and it seems to be getting stronger. With that in mind, you start play on September the 3rd, and, and you're on the road at Tabor, and then your first game at home is on September 10th against Ottawa. So uh, bring us to the opening of the, of the season because it's going to get here pretty quickly. Right, right. And so we're actually, we have young guys, new new players returning August 4th for camp, or excuse me, August 5th for camp, and the returners re reporting August 8th. And we're hoping to have that little weekend there to make sure we get our new guys acclimated. That way, when it comes August 8th, we can get the whole, you know, get the ground running and transition, do whatever we can to try to prepare for Tabor. Um, fortunately, we've had a good amount of success the last two years against Tabor. But um, historically, you know, they do a lot of things with their scheme that is that has given us issues. And I believe they have a new offensive coordinator coming in right now. And so it's going to be interesting. We've got to do whatever we can as a, as a coaching staff to get our guys prepared physically and then mentally get them prepared uh, as quickly as, as quickly as we can once we have a better understanding of what we're going to face schematically. And then transitioning into that week two, very similar situation. I, I think this conference has five new official head coaches. Um, going into this season, some of them similar to Ottawa coaches are staying or, or whatever, but um, it's going to be very interesting to see what what they're bringing to the table as well. Uh, 100%. I'm very confident both those teams are are going to improve compared to last season, like a lot of the conference. And so um, I think our guys are focused. I think our guys are are going to do whatever they can to be prepared, not try to look look over a team just because we might have had success a year ago. Um, and that's something that as a coach, it's up to us to make sure we're putting our guys in a good position to, to go out there and play. Um, from a physical standpoint, we've got a bunch of guys. We're fortunate being in Kansas City. We've got a bunch of guys that are staying here on campus that are running and working out with the team. Um, and so we're going to make sure we our guys are 100 percent in shape to go early September to play these games. Probably going to be hot football games, you know, midday. Um, and so, yeah, again, we're excited for it. Um, I mean, we report here a little over a month, and as a coach, you're just ready to get back after it. 
Well, Coach, I'm excited to see the Eagles this year and, and hope to get a chance to actually see them in person. That would be a lot of fun. And recent history says that you all are, are likely to win at least seven games. That's the way it's been for the last three or four years now. So uh, I know that you want to take it to the, to the next level as well. So success to the Eagles. And thank you, Coach Mark Benavidez, for being with us here on the Summit today as we are previewing the 2022 college football season. Thanks for your time, Coach. Again, thanks for having me. Come on up to Kansas City.